Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This morning, <clears throat> as we come to the last day of our convention, we have this opportunity to look at opened doors that no man can shut. And the idea is that since Thursday, when we gathered together, the Lord gave us the key. When you have the right key for any door, you can open any door. And so this morning we are looking at the church in Philadelphia. Yes, I know we have a church in Philadelphia in the United States, but turn with me to Revelation chapter 3. And in Revelation chapter 3 from verse 7, the scripture says that and unto the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things said he that is holy, he that is true, he that had the key of David, he that opened it and no man shut it, and shut it and no man opened it. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. And no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not. But do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I write upon him my new name. Amen. He that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. He's writing to the Philadelphia church, but he's announcing it to the churches. Praise the Lord. Philadelphia Church is one of, the, uh, one of two churches that did not receive rebuke from the Lord. The other church is Smyrna. But these churches, both Smyrna and Philadelphia, were under the scourge of Satan. When a church is attacked or opposed by Satan, we, we don't think of it as it was the empty building that Satan was attacking knocking down the wall and uh, knocking breaking the windows of the uh, of the church if that's all he did will we care but really that's not the main focus of the uh, the enemy's assault on the on the church he attacks members as strategic 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 okay strategic areas Okay, praise the Lord. <laughs> it attacks the members in specific significant areas of their lives. It could be health, it could be finance, it could be marriage, it could be career, it could be profession, it could be a lot of other various areas. And it goes in, and when he lays hold on those areas, those members, significant in the church, those people, leaders in the church, those people are not able to focus on kingdom goals. 
to serve the Lord effectively. It attacks their finance, and sometimes it may not just be that this will lose their job. It could just be the spirit of poverty. So even though they have enough, they are worrying if they pay their tithes, they're going to be poor tomorrow. And so they would hold their tithes. It's a spirit. It's a spirit. And so every time they're supposed to put $20, they put $2. Why? You know, I'm making room for tomorrow. You know, I have college tuition. You know, I have this, I have this. And the more they withhold, the more they lose. It attacks, he attacks the church in various ways. And then, you see, he attacks the ministry in other areas, causing divisions. The things that are suggested to the minds of the members that make them take wrong action, that cause divisions, that cause opposition to leadership, that cause distraction from the goal of the church. The goal of the church is evangelization of the world, isn't it? That's the goal of the church. And then we Christians, children of our Heavenly Father, born of the Spirit of God, born again, born from above. You know, when the uh, brother Moss was showing us uh, the Greek version of uh, being born again in John 3, you know, born and a thing, and a thing, it's from above. You know, born of God, children of the Most High God. And I think about this, that all we do is spend our time focusing on ourselves, focusing on our needs, and we forget that the life we have came from above. <laughs> We're not focusing on above. And that's why Paul told the Corinthian church, you know what? Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth in Colossians chapter 3. And so you see, this is one of the, uh, the things that the enemy does that keeps us distracted, discouraged, and confused. The proud spirits, the wicked spirit, the lying spirit, the rebellious spirit are sometimes found in the church, and yet they are not of God, isn't it? They are the tares mingling with the wheat that Jesus was talking about. There is a Jonah in every sheep. There is an Achan in every camp. And there is a Judas in every church that will betray. Leaders know that very well. But, but that's not a portion, amen? amen? And because of what the Lord has done in this convention... Uh, the glory of the Lord will be magnified in all the churches in Jesus' name. You see, from the beginning of this convention, we have received the keys. We received the keys, and particularly the master keys to open all doors. Now, the Lord is saying unto us, the doors are open. The doors are open. And now when the doors are open, we need to take action. If you, go, if you had a door that was closed before, and now it is open, you just stand there watching. Ah, this door is good when it's open. No. That's what you do. No, uh, whatever that door was blocking, whatever that door was supposed to be leading to, you want to take action. And I trust we will take action in Jesus' name. Let's, let's examine, uh, examine three things here. Number one, the presentation of open doors. And then we'll, fin we'll, we'll go on to perspectives of open door. And uh, finally, uh, the possessing through open door. Presentation of open doors. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 7 and 8. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things said he that is holy, he that is true, he that had the key of David. He that opened it, and no man shut it, and shut it, and no man opened it, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength, and hast, not, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Praise the Lord. Behold, I have set before thee, what? An open door. Now, first of all, who is the presenter? Who is presenting this open door to us? The Lord Jesus Christ. But that's not enough. Let's look at how the Lord introduces himself before he gives us this open door. Number one, he says, he, uh, this thing said he that is what? Holy. Holy. 
holy. And so the church that is going to walk through open doors will have to be a holy church. And holy church, a person that intends to walk through an open door will have to be a holy person. A person that wants to have the door remain open all the time in any place, whether you are in Philadelphia or you are in any place, whether the Lucifer moves his bedroom next door to your church, you will operate, you will increase, you will be moved higher, you will be promoted in the name of Jesus Christ. And so he says the person that is talking is holy. He says the person that is talking is holy. You see, then apart from being holy, he says he's true. I often tell people, in order to like arouse the attention of the people to the uh, consciousness of the fact that uh, 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 of who Jesus is, I tell people Jesus doesn't know the truth. Jesus is the truth. Can you tell the difference? He's the embodiment of the truth. So we know the truth. We have to study. We have to pray. We have to. Jesus, he is the truth himself. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Like a pastor likes to put it, he's the true way to life. Praise the Lord. I say, praise the Lord. And so Jesus, is, he says, I am holy. He that is holy. He that is true. And then there's a third designation. A third a, a, a characterization, a third description that he gives to himself. What is that third description? He says he's the one that has the key of David. He's the one that, uh, well, let me maybe explain that a little bit to you. Uh, the, the key, when he says David, who was David? David was a king. David was not just an ordinary king. David was the, is presented in the scripture as the ideal king. In fact, his weaknesses are shown to us to tell, to tell us of the grace of God, raising up an ideal king. Do you know after David, it's difficult to find a king that compares with David. They're either fully out to idolatry or they're doing all this. Even his son started off very well, but we know what happened later with Solomon. And so you see, he says, he has that key of David. Key of David. Okay, so he has the authority of the king. The king. David being revered as an ideal king is the antitype of Jesus Christ. Key is a symbol of authority. And Jesus has that key. He is able to open and shut any door. Key is a token of possession. When you have the key, you own the property. Amen? If you say you have closed on a house, you bought a house, you close on a house, and at the closing, they tell you, well, um, we're not giving you the key. Do you own the house? Amen? Praise the Lord. If you say you bought a car, you know, sometimes uh, uh, the people play this thing in the parking lot. I don't mean just our sisters, you know. I'm peculiarly kind of always a... Uh, uh, ex uh, interesting. It gets my attention when I'm in a mall or in a parking lot anywhere, uh, how women are uh, kind of fascinated with this remote control thing, you know, and they will go like this, like it's so, such a big deal, you know, they press that thing and the thing goes ching chong ching. And sometimes in the parking lot, the way you know who owns the car, if you can't remember where you parked the car, it just press the panic button and his car will make noise. Amen. The way you know who owns the car is if he goes there and the door opens, he has the key. He has the key. You know, these days they make these other cars that uh, you don't need to even press any button. If just having the key on you, you touch the door, the door will open. You know, and the other was with my friend and uh, he, I, he didn't have the key and I was far from the car. And he tries to open the car. He's talking on the car. I say, you don't have the key. I have the key. Praise the Lord. You know, well, well, key is a symbol that you, are, you own it. You own it. And, and so Jesus is telling us something here. He says, I have the key of David. It's all mine. Amen? Amen? And anything that belongs to Jesus Christ, Satan cannot have it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. I say, praise the Lord. Well, look at the presenter. Who is the presentee? Who is he presenting this open door to? You know, it says to the angel of the church, the leader of the church, 
the, the local pastor, Angel Angelos, is Greek for the messenger. He's an agent of God, agent that God has sent to execute God's purpose in that church. In Philadelphia, in any place that that agent of God is, that messenger of God is, you are there to operate under God. You are there to execute the purpose of God. And the purpose of God cannot be defeated. And if the purpose of God cannot be defeated, you cannot be defeated in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. The messenger of the gospel of God is not greater than the message. Not the sender. Okay? And that's what we all submit to. And we thank God for that. Amen? Amen? And so, he is to deliver the message without his opinion. So, this message is sent to the church in general through the leader. And is telling the church in Philadelphia, look at the open door. He's telling the church in the United States, look at the open door. He's telling deeper life. In, the, in North America, I've set an open door before you. He's telling the church in the first century, look at the open door. He's telling the church in the 21st century, and in all ages, look at the open door. All those five categories of, 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 of uh, uh, church time and the place and, uh, and age, we have to understand, because he says, he that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. He said, you see, we have to understand if the church is ready for God to execute his purpose, because the plan, we don't make plan and get God to anoint it. We have to find out his plan from him. When you find out his plan, what he has in mind for Philadelphia, what he has in mind 